How is it going, everybody? Root of the Null here, coming back at you with more of the threading module in Python. And we're going to move into a function called join. And join is interesting because what it does is it waits for the current thread running to terminate before starting a new thread. It's interesting because it almost sounds like it's defeating the purpose of, of, of threading, right? Of because that way you're no longer multitasking, but you're waiting, you're having like this procedural one after the other process. But you still have all these different layers of threads to begin with. So maybe you can have two procedural things happening rather than one procedural thing happening and that sort of idea. <laughs> Maybe you'll see it in practice, or you're, you're definitely going to see a, a use for it later on when we get into it in, in curses and in bigger programs. But for now, when we're still playing with the module, it might be a little hard to understand. But we're going to roll with it anyway. What I want to show you guys is join. And the way where I'm going to set that up is I'm just going to have... Uh, first of all, let's modify the do this thread, that, that, that function. And let's say while well, x is less than... 300. Then we'll go ahead and uh, we don't have to pass, but we'll go ahead and print out X when we're all done with it and all. And uh, we don't need to worry about dead anymore because that's just going to display uh, the 300 in the uh, once it's done with the function, once it's done counting. And I don't care about active count or, or enumerate anymore, and we don't have to worry about that either. So now, if I were to run this in the in the code, here, let me get back to uh, my terminal. If I run this, undot variable x is not referred to. Oh, okay. Let's say let's set x to be a global variable. Let's set in the main function. Let's say global x, and x can go ahead and equal zero. Now, when we run this, okay, this is the first thread thread. <laughs> I, I added another word in there in between the last video. Sorry, and it counts all the way up to 300. Okay. Now, what if I wanted to create a different thread after this? What if I said, after do this, let's have a simple do after, right? Okay, we don't need to worry about that. I, I should have removed that to begin with. Dead, dead. And we don't need the print statement. I don't care about that either. And let's say while uh, x is less than 600, we're going to roll with this x plus equals 1, and then we'll, we'll print out x after that. Cool. Let's see what happens. Uh, starting, okay, we're not, getting the, we're not getting the 600 mark. Oh, of course, we didn't even, we didn't even call the thread, right? Let's, let's create a new thread. Our next thread can just go ahead and equal threading thread target can be due after, like we just created. And I'm not going to worry about the names anymore. Those were an interesting concept and idea when we had those, but we don't need to worry about them now. And our next thread can go ahead and start. Let's check this out. Python, us threading, okay, 300, 600, 373, whoa, 373, 600, why is it doing that? 300, 600, whoa, 312, 600, you can see there's no new line. Well, these threads are, they're like, inter they're intertwining, they're getting in the way of each other. 600, 600, what the heck? Who put that there? And if you keep experimenting with this, you can see more and more weird things happening. Because the threads are sort of getting in the way of each other when they're going through their execution. What if we set up a join? Which is really interesting. What if, before we set up the join, what if we went ahead and said, Okay, in this do after function, I don't even want to worry about that being 300. What if, what if we just went ahead and said x is equal to 450? Because in that case... We might not see the 300 if we test in the do this function. If x is equal to 300, that's when we'll go ahead and print out x, right? Now, if we run this, 300, 300, 300, 300, okay. 600, whoa, you see it right there? 600, there was no 300 at all. That means that the threads must have got caught up in each other, and x became 450 before was x was able to print it out in the other function, in the initial do this thread. Huh. Okay, so what if we waited? What if we just said, we're going to wait for the initial thread. What if we wait for the do this to finish? The way that we do that is we type in our thread dot join. So the current thread that's running, what we're going to do is we're going to wait till that terminates before we start any other threads. 
Now, you're always going to see 300 and 600 in our execution. Let's check it out. 300, 600, 300, 600, 300, 600. I can run this as many times as I want, and you're always going to see the new line. You're always going to see the 300 and 600. There is no inconsistencies because it's acting in a procedural way. It's waiting for this thread to finish before it does this one after. Do this, do after. Do not do them at the same time, but do them in a different time than initial main function. Because after all, we do have other threads happening. We do have our enumerate threading not enumerate. We do have that main thread still happening. So you got to keep in mind what's going on here. And it's interesting now, because if you see this, thread 2 is the only one still running, because we're getting 300 and then 600. But these threads are messing up. The initial thread and the 600 thread, because those aren't joined together. You can't really join anything with your main thread, because that's silly. That just means that thread is going to run after your, your main code finishes, but if your main code is finished, you have no program. <laughs> As you can see, guys, threading is really interesting. And you have to kind of play with it. You have to kind of see how it all works. And you got to understand it. But we're going to have some really cool uses for it later on when we start to build more and more things. But for now, keep in mind the join function. That's going to wait for one thread to finish before it starts to do another thread after. Okay. Thanks, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. And I'll see you in the next tutorial.